Hey everyone, thanks for joining the Dynamic Zone Visibility Workshop. And as promised, here is your exclusive tutorial for building a mobile dashboard with Dynamic Zone Visibility. Let's hop right into it. This is the visualization we're going to rebuild. We're going to have a drill down for three different metrics. And anytime you click on a metric, it's going to reveal the chart underneath. So Dynamic Zone Visibility is in play here with each of the line charts that you see. So when I click on sales, it's going to reveal the line chart for sales. Same thing for profit, same thing for customers. In Tableau, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect to Superstore. And the first thing I need to do is to build these three charts that we're looking at here. In the columns, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna type in the average of zero. And I'm gonna double click again and type in the average of one. We now have multiple marks cards and you'll see the average of one has given me a bar chart by default. That's great. I'm gonna make sure that Tableau keeps that as a bar chart by going to the marks card and changing that to a bar. On my average of zero marks card, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to a Gantt bar, and I'm gonna turn on my labels, and I'm gonna make sure the label stays right aligned and centered vertically, and click on the color shelf and reduce the opacity down to zero. Okay, don't worry that the label says zero right now. We'll take care of that later. Now I want to make this into a dual axis chart. So I'm going to right click on the average of zero field on the columns and choose dual axis. And then I'm going to right click again and choose synchronize. Over here in the original, the bar chart fills up the entire space. So I'm going to double click on either of the axes and I'm going to set the range to go from zero to one. And then I can go ahead and hide that header. On the marks card, I wanna have sales at the end. So on my average of one, I'm gonna drag sales onto the label. And Tableau automatically put it inside the end of the bar because I didn't give it enough space to put it outside the bar because I fixed the axis to one. I'm gonna click on the size shelf and just make that as big as I can to fill up the space. And over on the all marks card, let's go ahead and drag measure names off of the view. If you want, you can change the color of that bar by going to the average of one shelf. And let's say I make it, you know, like a, like a medium gray or something like that. So now we have the total sales on the right hand side, but I need to have this plus minus indicator for the drill down. And I need to have the name of the measure on the bar as well. Let's start with the measure name. And I'm gonna just create a calculated field and I'll just call it sales text. And all it's gonna have in here is the word sales. This is going to be useful for when we do our dynamic zone visibility. Go to the Gantt chart marks card and drag that onto text. And you can see this now says sales. Okay, so I want this to have a plus or a minus beforehand. So I'm going to start building my dynamic zone visibility along the way. So I'm going to start by building a parameter. Click the drop down to choose create parameter. And I'll call this my measure parameter. The data type needs to be a string. You don't really have to type anything in the current value, but let me go ahead and type sales in there and click on OK. I'm gonna right click on that parameter and show it so we can see what it does on the right hand side. Now I'm gonna create a calculated field. This is gonna be used for both showing that plus or minus, but also our dynamic zone visibility. I'm gonna call this calculation show sales. And I'm gonna say the parameter, so our measure parameter, is that equal to sales. That's gonna return a true false and click on OK. I'm now gonna right click on that show sales field and I'm gonna edit the aliases. When it's true, I want to make it a minus. So this is going to put this minus or plus sign in the front. Click on okay. And if I go ahead and make this, I'll change this to say profit and go back into my aliases. And now I see false and I want to make that one up plus. Click on okay. And I'm going to drag that field to the label shelf as well. Now it looks like the label disappeared, so let's click on the label shelf and choose the three dots. I'm gonna move my sales text to the beginning. I should have show sales at the beginning and then sales text. Okay, there we go. So now if I change this back to sales, you'll see that turns into a minus sign. Okay, so we're all good to go there. I'm gonna change my fit to be entire view. It's not gonna look great right now, but that's okay. And we also have borders around the outside and everything, but I'll leave that to you to clean it up as maybe as part of your homework. Okay, so let's call this sheet our sales summary. And we want to do the same thing for profit and for the customer count. I'm going to duplicate my sales summary sheet. And while I'm here, I'll rename this to my profit summary. I'm going to create a new calculated field. I'm going to call profit text, and I'll just put the word profit 
in a string and click on OK. And I'm going to replace sales text with profit text. And I'm going to duplicate the show sales calculation, edit the copy, and let's call this one show profit. And in this calculation, I want to change this to say profit instead of sales. And I'm going to double check my aliases. So right click on that field and choose aliases. And you see it retained my plus and my minus. Perfect. So let's drag show profit on top of show sales. And there we go. I can test my parameter again, type in profit, and it change, puts the little minus sign before there. And on the average of one shelf, I want to drag profit on top of sales to replace it. Perfect. So that's profit done. Let's duplicate that sheet. This time we're going to rename this sheet as our customer summary. On the average of one shelf, I'm going to right click and drag customer ID on top of the profit field. And I'm going to choose count distinct of customers. I just want to know how many customers I have. So I have 793 customers. Go to your average of zero shelf and we need to replace these two fields. So I'm going to create another calculated field called customers text. And this is just going to have the word customers. Click on OK and replace profit text with customer text. But we need to update our plus minus as well. So let's duplicate show profit and edit that copy. And we'll call this one show customers. And click on OK. And we're going to drag show customers and replace show profit. And we can test it again. Let's call this customers. And there we go. We've got the minus sign in the front. Excellent. We've now created these three bar charts there. And you can format them kind of whatever way you want. Now we want to create our charts. We're going to actually create three different charts in this case. Let's say, first off, we want to look at just sales over time. I'm going to right-click and drag order date to the columns to bring up my little pop-up menu. If you're on a Mac, that's the option key. And I'll choose continuous quarters and hit OK. And let's drag sales to the rows. And that's it. So let's rename this sheet quarterly sales. And again, I'll leave it up to you to format the view. Let's create another sheet. And this time we want to look at profit by state. So I'm gonna double click on the state field and I'm gonna drag profit to the text shelf. And there we go. I'll go ahead and clean up my background layers by reducing the washout to zero. And that's it, that's all we wanna do there. Let's rename this sheet profit by state. And then lastly, we wanna create some kind of sheet for our customers. Let's say we wanna do the top 10 customers. I'm going to drag customer name to the rows. Let's drag sales to the columns. And we're gonna sort descending. I'm gonna right click on this customer name at the top and choose hide and fill labels for rows. And I wanna filter this to the top 10. Right click on customer name and choose filter. In this general tab, choose use all. Then click on the top button by field and we'll say top 10 by sales. And that's it there. Let's go ahead and fit this one to the entire view as well and rename this sheet as your top 10 customers. Now we've already built everything that we need to build our mobile dashboard. Create a new sheet, and we're actually going to build a mobile dashboard by default, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots next to the phone and delete. Our size, I know a mobile phone is 375 wide, and it tends to be 667 high. Let's just do 600 for now, because we're gonna to need to play around with this anyway. If you hold your shift key down and float in a vertical container, then go to your layout tab, and we want to start this container in the upper left. So that's my X position of zero and my Y position of zero. And then the width and the height, I want to set to the same as the dashboard. So 375 by 600. If I go ahead and change my dashboard width to 400, you'll see that container changed along with it. So let me hit undo to go back to my 375. Okay, I'm going to drag a text object into that container to be my title. And I'm going to call this my mobile overview. Maybe I'll make it a nice, a nice big font, something like that. Okay, I like the size of that, so I'm going to just go ahead and hit the pin to fix the height. Now, one thing I forgot to do when I first added this dashboard was to add some padding on it so everything comes off the edges a bit. So I'm going to go to my layout tab, and I'll give it a border, maybe a light gray border. And I'm going to choose an inner padding of 10. So that'll bring everything off of the sides a bit. You can see it there. You can see my hash lines don't go all the way to the edge now. Okay, from here, it's just a matter of dragging the sheets into the view. So I'll drag sales summary into the view. And then I'll drag quarterly sales below that. Make sure you stick it in the same container. I'll drag profit summary below that. And then my profit by state below that. And then my customer summary 
and my top 10 customers below that. I'm gonna hide all of the titles. And notice in the background, you have this thing called measure parameter. You also have your color legend back there. So let's go to the layout tab. And down here, we've got this tiled option. Just right click on that and choose remove from dashboard. Click on delete containers. Okay, so now what happened is it looks like we lost the space for each of our summary sheets. So I'm gonna click on sales summary down here in item hierarchy. And let's edit the height of that. Let's say we want it to be 75. Let's see if that's big enough. Okay, that's a bit too big, actually. So let's edit the height and let's maybe make it 50. Okay, that's pretty good. Go to the profit summary and do the same thing. Let's edit the height of that and make it 50. And then same thing with my customer summary. Edit the height and make it 50. Perfect. So now I want to turn on my dynamic zone visibility. And this is where we go back to these calculations we created for show customers, show profit, and show sales. Click on the sales sheet, and I only want to show this sheet. So click on control visibility using, and I only want to show this sheet when sales is in my parameter. So choose show sales, and notice that disappears because if I go back over to my parameter, it says customers in it. Go to the map, and we want to choose control visibility using, and this time we're going to choose show profit. And then lastly, we'll go to the top 10 customers, control visibility using, show customers. And that one stay there because my parameter now says customers. Okay, so from here, it's a matter of setting up a couple of parameter actions. Go up to dashboard and choose actions. We need to add three dashboard actions. Let's click on add action, change parameter. Let's call this one update sales. And I'm gonna select all the sheets and then uncheck. That unchecks all of them just a bit quicker. Choose sales summary. Our target parameter is measure parameter. Our source field is sales, and we'll leave the current value. Click on OK. We're going to add a second action for our profit. Let's call this one update profit. This is only going to use my profit summary sheet. Target parameter is measure parameter. And the source field is profit text. Again, leave the current value. Click on OK. Add one more action for change parameter. We're going to call this one update customers. And this time it will only be our customer summary. Target parameter is measure parameter. Source field is customer text. Click on OK. Click on OK again, and let's give this a test. Now notice when I click on these, it's actually not working. The reason that is, is because I messed up a bit when I created my bar charts. I need to go back over to each of my bar charts. What was happening is when they click on the bar, it was basically activating this bar chart which is this average of one shelf, which doesn't have the sales text on it. So we need to drag sales text onto detail. Same thing on the profit summary. Go to the average of one marks card, drag profit text on the detail. Customer summary, drag customer text onto detail. And let's give it another test. Click on customers, and there we go. Click on profit, there we go. Click on sales, there we go. The issue we have now is when I click on a bar, I no longer see that other text in the front. So there's a pretty simple workaround for that. I'm gonna to go to the sales summary sheet and I'm gonna create a new calculated field. I'm gonna call T and I'm just gonna put the word true in there and click on okay. I'm gonna create another one called F and put the word false in there. Click on okay. And on the all marks card, I'm gonna drag the F to the detail shelf. And I'll do that for each of the sheets. So go to profit summary, and drag the F onto detail, customer summary, and drag the F onto detail. Over in the dashboard now, I need to set up three more actions. Go up to dashboard and then actions. Click on add action and we're gonna use a filter action. This is actually going to de-highlight. So I'm gonna call it remove sales highlight. And I only want this to run when I choose my sales summary sheet. We want to run it on select. Make sure you get these steps exactly right. Down here in the target sheet, make sure you pick the sheet, not the dashboard. Choose show all values. And in the filter at the bottom, choose selected fields. And you're going to say F equals T. Click on OK. We're going to add another filter action. We're going to call this remove profit highlight. The only sheet we want this to run on is my profit summary. 
on select. Again, in your target sheets, make sure you pick the sheet itself. That's going to be profit summary. Show all values, selected fields, and we're going to say F equals T. Click on OK. And one more, remove highlight. Choose another filter action. Let's call this remove customer highlight. We're going to only use the customer summary sheet. Run it on select. My target sheet, remember not to choose the dashboard here, choose the sheet itself. Show all values. Selected fields down in the filter section. And then F equals T. Click on OK. And click on OK again. Now I want to click on sales. Notice it de-highlights that as we go through. Okay, so all of that is working perfectly. What I would do from here is clean up the visualization, set a default view. So let's say you want the default view to be sales, publish it up, and you're good to go. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And again, thanks for coming to this Dynamic Zone Visibility Masterclass. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I loved delivering it to you.